you know, it's Fugitive Australian journalist Shane Dowling from the website and YouTube channel, Kangaroo Court of Australia. Now, the National Anti-Corruption Commission has cleared Commissioner Paul Brereton of any wrongdoing in the robo-debt recusal scandal, but the National Anti-Corruption Commission Inspector Gail Furness is still to hand down her judgment, so they're not in the clear yet. But the National Anti-Corruption Commission and Paul Brereton have flagged uh, what they plan on doing, what their defence is. And I know this because they responded to some questions. I emailed them and I just published an article on the issue. And if you go to my website, Kangaroo Court of Australia, you'll be able to see that email and the response there that yourself. Now, the NAC and Paul Brereton obviously going to dig in and fight. Uh, but uh, how that pans out, we don't know yet because it's up really up to the inspector, then up to the politicians to determine what they're going to do. Now, I'll publish an article on Thursday, the 5th of September, 2024, and it's titled, NAC says Commissioner Paul Brereton didn't break the law and stands by his recusal claim regarding robo-debt. And it starts off, Commissioner Paul Brereton is digging in and claims he didn't breach recusal common law when he recused himself from decision-making for the robo-debt six referrals. While he still retained visibility of significant steps taken in relation to the Barobo Debt Royal Commission referrals and contributed his own views on some of the issues when requested or when he considered it appropriate. Background to Commissioner Paul Brereton's recusal. The NAC released a statement on the 6th of June 2024 saying the NAC would not investigate six people that had been referred to the NAC for alleged corruption by the Robo Debt Royal Commissioner, Catherine Holmes. One of the six included NAC Commissioner, Paul Brereton's good friend, Catherine Campbell. It was a blatant cover-up by the NAC. The NAC said Paul Brereton had recused himself from the decision-making. On the 13th of June, 2024, the Inspector of the National Anti-Corruption Commission, Gail Furness, SC, announced that she will investigate the NAC for alleged corrupt conduct regarding the RoboDeck cover-up. NAC documents obtained via Freedom of Information application that were published on Twitter on the 8th of August, 2024, and answers that the NAC gave to questions from The Guardian on the 15th of August 2024 showed that Paul Brereton had not recused himself from the robo-debt matter. I sent evidence to the Inspector of the National Anti-Corruption Commission on the 20th of August 2024 regarding Paul Brereton's claim to recusal. Below is the email I sent the NAC media team with questions, and their response is below that. Below is the email to the NAC media team on Tuesday the 3rd of September 2024 from Shane Dowling, sent at 8.37am, and it says, Dear Sir, Madame, I'm an independent journalist, and I have a few questions regarding NAC Commissioner Paul Brereton. Background to the questions. The NAC told the public and Attorney General Mark Dreyfus that Commissioner Paul Brereton had recused himself from the robo-debt decision-making. On the 15th of August 2024, the Guardian published answers. The NAC gave to various questions, and the NAC admitted... Commissioner Paul Brereton retained visibility of significant steps taken in relation to the RoboDebt Royal Commission referrals and contributed his own views on some issues when requested or when he considered it appropriate. If that is correct, then it puts Commissioner Paul Brereton in blatant breach of recusal precedents, such as the High Court's judgment in Ebner versus Official Trustee in Bankruptcy 2000 and the judgment in Regina versus Magistrates Court at Lilydale 1973. Questions. Given Commissioner Paul Brereton is a former New South Wales Supreme Court judge and would know recusal common law and precedent extremely well, why did he blatantly breach recusal common law? Given Commissioner Paul Brereton's blatant breach of recusal common law, will he be resigning as NAC Commissioner in the near future? If not, why not? Did any other staff advise Commissioner Paul Brereton that he was breaching the law by failing to legally recuse himself from the robot matter? Please respond by 5 p.m. today in case I have further questions and so I can publish. Regard, Shane Dowling. The NAC media team responded as per below. They responded on Tuesday, the 3rd of September, 2024 at 4.50 p.m. And it says, good afternoon. Recusal is the act of declining or refusing to be the decision maker in a matter. Commissioner Brereton stated that he would recuse from the decision making. As the documents you refer to demonstrate, the Commissioner declined to be the decision maker in relation to the RoboDebt Royal Commission referrals and delegated the matter to a Deputy Commissioner. Although recusal in the context of judicial decision making is not directly applicable to a decision of the Commission whether or not to commence an investigation, the precedents to which you refer do not support any different view. And that's the end of their response. My article goes on to say, NAC response analysed by me. The NAC's response to my questions 
does not pass the pub test. But more importantly, it doesn't pass the recusal double might test as outlined on the Judicial Commission of New South Wales website as per below. The NAC says recusal is the act of declining or refusing to be the decision maker in a matter, which is true. But that does not mean if you recuse yourself from a matter as the decision maker, that you can then join the decision-making team and or process, which is what Commissioner Paul Brereton did when he retained visibility of significant steps taken in relation to the Robodet Royal Commission referrals and contributed his own views on some issues when requested or when he considered it appropriate. Our recusal law applies to Commissioner Paul Brereton and his claimed recusal. The key issue with the judge recusing themselves from a matter is not what they did or didn't do. It's a perception of bias or apprehended bias. And it's what the average person would think the judge might have possibly done. The Judicial Commission of New South Wales website says, The test for determining whether a judge should disqualify himself or herself by reason of apprehended bias is the objective double might test, whether a fair-minded lay observer might reasonably apprehend that the judge might not bring an impartial and unprejudiced mind to the resolution of the question the judge is required to decide. Uh, quotes the relevant precedents, Johnson v. Johnson, 2000, affirmed by Ebner versus official trustee in bankruptcy, 2000. The main concern with Commissioner Paul Burton having knowledge of the details of the robot at sex referrals is that he might leak it to his friend Catherine Campbell. And as a former New South Wales Supreme Court judge, Paul Burton would know that. Yet he still stuck his nose in anyhow. The three NAC deputy commissioners, Ms. Nicole Rose, Dr. Bennett Gauntlet, and Ms. Kylie Kilgore, would have known that Commissioner Paul Brereton should have been nowhere near the matter. But based on the Freedom of Information documents, they didn't say anything about him sticking his nose into the details. Let's break the recusal up to three parts. Using the double might test, Commissioner Paul Brereton recused himself from dealing with the RoboDebt 6 because he knew one of the RoboDebt 6 well, which we know from my reporting was because of his relationship with Catherine Campbell. Now let's look at Commissioner Paul Brereton when he retained visibility of significant steps taken in relation to RoboDebt Royal Commission referrals and contributed his own views on some issues when requested or when he considered it appropriate. Number two, does Commissioner Paul Brereton, when he retained visibility of significant steps taken in relation to the RoboDebt Royal Commission referrals, pass a double might test, given he knows Catherine Campbell well? Of course not. Number three, does Commissioner Paul Brereton, when he contributed his own views on some issues when requested, or when he considered appropriate, pass a double might test given he knows Catherine Campbell well. Of course not. The bottom line, this website is a judicial corruption website, and as you would expect, I've written about judicial recusal dozens, if not hundreds of times. I'd be one of the top journalists in Australia when it comes to recusal law by the fact it is something I've written about regularly since 2011. I've also filed and argued my own recusal applications in the New South Wales Supreme Court during Kerry Stokes' eight-year war of law against me. Recusal law is not complex, and because it's not complex, I can tell you for a fact that Commissioner Paul Brereton and the NAC know Brereton breached recusal common law, as per the precedents I quoted above. But for now, they are digging in and standing by their claim that Commissioner Paul Brereton recused himself. If the Inspector of the National Anti-Corruption Commission, Gail Furness, S.C., hands down a judgment like she should, then Commissioner Paul Brereton will be gone. But if Gail Furness, SC, decides to support Commissioner Paul Brereton, then it's up to the politicians, Labor, Liberal and the Nationals, who want a corrupt National Anti-Corruption Commission, who will decide Commissioner Paul Brereton's fate, and likely Gail Furness's fate as well, as her position would become untenable after such a scandalous judgment. I can't see the politicians wanting to take the heat from the public for eight months out from a federal election when it's so obviously corrupt, and I'll keep on following up. Now, I'll put a link to that article below this video on YouTube. Make sure you click on the link because it's got a lot more information there. You can click on all the links there. A lot of the stuff I was reading out, I had a link at the end of those sentences so you could read on the further information. You'll be able to reread the email from the National Anti-Corruption Commission, their response. They obviously didn't respond to all three questions I put to them. The Ganga Record of Australia is independent media. I publish a website and a YouTube channel, and I'm 100% crowdfunded from viewers like yourself, so please support my Patreon account or PayPal account. I currently have 457 patrons, and I estimate I need to get the 600 patrons to become financially viable. You can donate any amount, $3, $5, $10, $15, $20, 30 40 50 a month, whatever suits your budget. It all helps in a big way. And the link for the Patreon account or PayPal account, 
who will be below this video on YouTube and also on my website. And please share this video on social media and please hit the like and subscribe button. Other than that, thank you for your time and have a good day.